Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we give you honor. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Father, we declare that there is none like you. Hallelujah. We can be like the songwriter says, I searched the whole world over. Hallelujah. There's just simply nobody like you, God, and we give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. God, when we look back and see where you brought us from and what you brought us to, God, we can do nothing more but to lift up our voice in God and give you praise. Hallelujah. Nobody, hallelujah, could have did it but you. Even when we didn't think we were going to make it through, God, you came through. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, Oh, God, we would have been consumed, God. We would have fainted. We would have fell out. We would have quit. We would have walked away, God. But it was you. And for that, God, we give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you. There's simply no God like you. There's no God that we can compare to you. You're simply God alone. God, if we haven't told you all year, we're going to take this time right now to tell you thank you. In this last Sabbath of the year, thank you for looking out for us. Thank you for covering us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for being merciful, kind, generous, forgiving. Thank you for being our protection, our shield, our strength, our joy. God, you've been better than what we deserve. But we thank you. So God, we come and we humble ourselves before your throne today. We ask you to forgive us for taking grace for granted. Forgive us for we've sinned against you and you alone. God, we ask you to cleanse us and wash us. God, that we don't go into another year dirty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bitter, angry, unforgiving, resentful, jealous, envying, full of strife, debating, debauchery. God, whatever the sin is, God, we want to enter into it clean. You say lift up clean hands and a clean heart. God, we want to know that even as we give you our worship, as we give you our praise and our admiration, God, that it is pure. It is clean. It is holy. For you are a holy God and you deserve holiness from your people. Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, somebody. God, you deserve holiness from us. For you say holiness without no man so she, you in peace. So God, we thank you. We honor you. And we bless you. For this space and this time and this year. To come before you and repent. To come before you and tell you thank you. We've seen it. We've not even told you thank you for your grace. And your mercy. And your loving kindness. And your tender mercy. So, God, we repent. We haven't been as grateful as we should have been. But, God, today, we confess that sin before you. We receive your forgiveness. Strengthen us to accept the challenge for change. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Get your Bibles and let's go to the book of Galatians. Chapter 5. You have to say amen. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free 
be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that it is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. But we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith to enable wait on it. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision but faith to enable but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well but who did hinder you that you not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you a little leaven leaven the whole lump. So for the scriptures. Amen. You may be seated. Look at your neighbor and say, not again. Mm. <laughs> God began to deal with me and he began to talk to me that the saints in the same cycle. So God began to say, he began to talk to me and tell me, he said, Tell the saints, not again. You mean to tell me that you're in the same place again? You've been free, but you find yourself right back in the same position, in the same mindset, in the same struggle. Tell your neighbor, not again. He said, listen, when we get to the book of Galatians, by the time we get to chapter 5, there is so many things that are going on. He done been talking and dealing with the saints about some of the same issues. If you go from chapter 1 all the way through 4, when you get to 5, he said, now you should have made a stand by now. You don't been through enough stuff that now you should have a stand in you. I know we're talking about deliverance, but how can you be delivered if you can't even stand? By now, there should be a stand in you. There should be a standard. Uh-oh. Mm. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberties. You're you, you moving too slow. The problem is, we got people who start and stop, and when it's time to make a decision and make a move, we start getting slowful. Because we believe that I don't, you know, I move too fast. It's, it's easy. We find that people move quick in the sin, and they move slow into righteousness. Mm. Your stand, you took a stand too slow. A stand is a standard. When did you begin to take your standard for what God said about your life? For who he say you are. Not who you going to be, but who you are right now. Have you taken a stand for that? Who knows your stand? Many times we're in trouble because we compromise the stand. You lost the stand because there was no standards. And so when there's no standard, everything moves slow. When it's time to do things the right way. Uh-oh. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the living with Christ that made us free. You've been free, but this is what the problem is in, in Christianity. Christianity. We got so much freedom until we just don't have no boundaries and we don't have no rules. I'm free. I'm free to say whatever I want to say. I'm free to do whatever I want to do. I'm free to make whatever change. I'm free to evaluate God the way I want to see him. It doesn't matter how you see him. I don't care. I got my own view. And so everybody gone to their private interpretation. We got a private view of who God is. And so I don't have to adhere to your rules or your rules or anybody's rules. Because now, my personalized relationship is now, has manifested until there is no standard. Mm -hmm. 
we serve the same God, but at different variables. Mm -hmm. My God said, I can fornicate and still be saved. My God said, I can smoke weed and still be saved. My God said, I can get drunk and still be saved. My God said that I can commit adultery and still be saved. My God said I can be bitter and still be saved. Because what has happened is what everybody likes or what everybody's comfortable with, it becomes their standard. And so just because you don't believe it, I believe it. Even though the word says different, but since it's based on my personal belief, I begin to establish righteousness and holiness, not by the word of God anymore, but by my personal conviction. Oh, I can't get no help in here now. I don't feel convicted if I fornicate. Because that's natural. So, I, you know, so if I don't feel convicted, to me, it ain't sin. Even if the father says it is. So now everybody's moving by my personal conviction rather than the word of God. So there is no stand. So this freedom is so you can live more righteous, not more wickedly. God didn't get you free so you can just roam around, establish your own holiness, do whatever you want to do, say whatever you want to say, act however you want to act. That's not what this liberty is about. It is free to be holy in an unholy world. <laughs> yeah, I can't get no help of being now. This freedom is to be righteous around unrighteousness. That you're not going to force me to feel convicted to be drunk just because you drunk. Or to get high because you high. Or to screw just because you horny. Ooh, whoa, my, 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 up in here is getting warm. It's getting warm up in here. It's getting warm up in here. Oh, I didn't come to play today. It's getting warm up in here. So he said he has made us free not to be entangled again with his yoke of bondage. Because let me tell you something what comes with sin. A bondage. A yoke. A weight of guilt. I don't care how you walk, baby. That yoke of guilt going to come because his presence going to come. And it's going to bring a heaviness down on you. And some going to say, mm-mm, baby, you know you wrong. Ooh. See, we can be around people who don't understand righteousness and we good. But get around some folks who live in something. The reason why there's not a standard is because ain't enough of y'all living holy to bring the conviction that should come through the church. Because while we got one group fornicating, we got another group masturbating, we got another group lying, we got another group jealous, another group envy. So all this combined together lacks holy credibility. There's not a credibility for holiness, so I can't really look at you, and you can't really look at me, because you got some, and I got some. And so what happened is guilt won't make you, you, you don't feel righteous to speak out when you're guilty. So I'm, I'm just working out my own stuff, so I, I'm just, everybody working their own job, it's just here in Tremont. And without conviction. <laughs> That's the problem. You're trying to work out something that you have not even embraced without understanding. Oh, my God. Now, you entangled because you didn't thought you were going to get caught out there like this. Not you. Not, uh, not all the scriptures you know. You know how to call on his name, and you know how to get him to you. And if it gets tricky, you know how to get to him. So what happens is because I know how to get to God, I don't feel an obligation to walk humbly to him. I don't feel like I got to do all of that because I've been here before. See, you've been entangled before. Again, it means this a, a repeat. So you've been in fornication before, and you came through fornication, and now you're out. You've been in masturbation before, so you done broke it, the cycle, now you're back in it. 
You've been uh, in, in multiple relationships before where you've just been the whore of Babylon, and now you're back in it. You've been bitter before, and now you're back being bitter again. You've been in perversion. You came out a little while. Now it captured you again. It's a yoke because it's a bondage because this thing ain't going to just volunteer and leave you. Let me tell you something. You ain't ready for this, but there's going to be a separation in 2020. Or whatever is separating you from holiness. You ain't going to have to ask it to leave you. It's going to go on its own. And the reason why it's going to go, because it's going to be a decision that you're going to have to make. Either I'm going to live for God or I'm not. It's simple as that. Ain't no game. It's either, either you're going to live for God or you're not. If you decide to live for him, he'll separate you from it. Your love for him will turn you off. Let me tell you something. You can love God that another love will turn you all the way off. But the reality, God don't love him. You like God. But you love your flesh. You like God. But you love doing whatever you want to do. See, the thing is, you're not in love with him. Because when you're in love with somebody, you want everything to please them. You're like, oh, what can I do? That's how you know you're in love. Because you will go cross boundaries. You will go exceptions to please them. That's how you know your love for God don't wax cold. Because he's not at the top of your list anymore. Mm -mm. It, it ain't there. It used to be like, uh-uh. For God I live, for God I die. Baby, I have to lose family, friends, everything. It used to be for God. And now, you ain't willing to leave and lose a night's sleep for him. God says, stay up. You can't even stay up and pray. You too tired. You too sleepy. You too exhausted. Too much on your mind. You too distracted. So you ain't willing. God ain't even a priority in your life. Don't fool yourself because you come into these sacred doors and you sit up in a, in a seat for a couple of hours and come to church on Wednesday and on the phone call for 20 minutes that you're in love with him. You waste your time all the time and it ain't even on him. So the fact that you're giving God a little of your time don't denote that you love him. But this yoke that's on your back, mm -hmm. you carrying this thing. Because guess what? Sin don't carry you, you carry it. Mm -hmm. you carrying the guilt, you carrying the remorse, you carrying the responsibility of what you've done, it is on your back. <laughs> That's why you all bend over. Mm -hmm. That's why you always tired, because you're carrying stuff that you wasn't, you wasn't supposed to carry. Oh, I don't know why I'm so tired all the time. It's your yoke, boo. <laughs> the extra weight that you're carrying called sin. Hallelujah. You can barely get through your door, but you're trying to get dragged to your bed. You're trying to get to the bed because you're tired. It ain't just work. It's sin. Because you having to fight, entangle me, I'm going to have to fight my way through just for peace. You exhausted from having to fight to maintain a level of Sanity to keep your mind right when you know you done done wrong. <laughs> uh huh. Because the hope of his calling is in your head. The responsibility of who he called you to be is a weight on you. Come on here. And now you having to fight through that because you know you are not being who he ordained and called and purposed you to be. You struggling in your mind trying to think about everything but his presence. Mm -hmm. Try not to think about what you're missing. Try not to miss his voice. Oh, Jesus. Trying to fight your way. Trying to think about how I'm going to get out of this. Why well, I still desire to be in it. Ooh, the fight. How to be free when you like your bond. You got the Patty, what her name? Patty Hurst syndrome. 
Patty Hearst was the woman, she was kidnapped, but fell in love with the kidnapper. So they cause became hurry. You start off as a victim. Now you're a participant. Ooh. It start off as a trick, but now you trapped. Ooh. Mm -hmm. But he told you this. Don't get entangled. Don't get mixed up in this again. Because when you get free, seven worse than what you had before are coming back to you. Uh, you know how deep you were in it. You know how hard it was the last time. And now you're thinking it's going to be easy to get free again. Do you for forget how difficult it was to get free? Ah, did you forget? How hard it was to wash your soul clean. Did you forget how hard it was to get your mind back? You forget the prayers and the scriptures and 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 the worship in the praise, in the prayers, in the scripture, in the worship, in the praise, and the prayers, in the scripture, in the worship, in the praise, and you still got a faint memory of it. Here you are again, entangled. Tell your neighbor, not again, not again. Come on. Ah, can you afford to be where you were again? Can you afford your mind to be on the line again? Can you afford to put your soul in jeopardy again? Can you afford to miss his voice again? Can you afford for another family member to be lost again? Because you ain't in position. You ain't in place. You can't hear. You can't see. You can't respond to what God said because you in your flesh. You can't help and assist because you too busy trying to fight your way free. Be not entangled. Tell your neighbor, don't get mixed up again. Let me tell you what God spoke to me this morning. I was up. I know I was like, Lord, have mercy. This man, is he ever going to go to bed? I was up at 3 o'clock. I was loud. I was like, Lord, what in the world is going on? I hate this season of blood pressure. I say, what is this pressure from the city? What is this? He says, the sins of the people pressing against the door. I said, the same? Right back in the cycle again. You're back in the cycle again. It's like the minute I leave, oh, everybody want to pray. Because everybody still looking at reality before they get caught, before it gets bad, before it gets out of hand. God say everybody's trying to manage sin. He said the saints ain't trying to be free. They're trying to manage it. I said, say it ain't so. So he, listen, verse 2 says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, if God take away the layer, if he take away the outer layer, will you have true intimacy with him or will you give that intimacy to someone else? See, some of y'all, you're not yearning to be intimate with God. You want to be touched. You want to be held. You want to know the intimacy of the flesh. Ah, mm, it used to be for him. God said he'd been replaced. <laughs> Can't get no help in this sanctified church with no sanctified members. Hallelujah. 
Oh, God, help us up in here. If I take away the outer layers, will we have real intimacy? Because we can't have intimacy without truth. You're trying to be intimate. Oh, God, I give you my worship. No, you ain't. You ain't worshiping me. You're worshiping the fact that you want to be touched. You're worshiping the fact you want to be felt. You're worshiping the fact you want to be cuddled. You're worshiping the fact, oh, come on, you want to be caressed. It ain't my arms you want. It ain't my touch you yearn. God Almighty! He's saying, Christ shall profit you nothing. Because you believe that your intimacy with Christ, you ain't gained nothing for him. I, I, I don't feel this back here. He ain't give it to nobody. <laughs> I'm still broke. I don't did right by God. I'm still struggling with my bills. Let me tell you something. Your bills ain't got nothing to do with your intimacy with Christ. Quit measuring God by how much in your bank account. Your, uh, your accountability and your responsibility of holy ain't got nothing to do with your bank account. God didn't promise you riches. So quit using your sanctification as a standard, as a payback, like, God, you owe me because I, 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 I didn't get my body away. Mm-mm, baby. That, 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 that's a standard, a very low one that you start with. But you want to pay God. God said you're not his prostitute. Ooh. Like you're going to have to pay me to live saved and not give this body to nobody. God didn't come to be, you're not God's mistress, boo. He didn't come to pay you not to give it to nobody else. Ooh. See, you've been a whore in the world and you're trying to bring it to the kingdom. But it don't work like that over here. Tell you like my friends say, Wanda, we don't do that here. We don't do that over here. We don't do that over here. We don't do that over here. Nobody going to pay you to preserve what's already been promised. You promised this body to God. You say, for God, this is you. Huh? I surrender. I give my all to you. And that included your body, your mind, and your spirit. He ain't got to pay you for it. You promised it to him. And anybody that ain't your spouse that you giving it to, that God ain't gave permission, you in sin. And both of y'all about to bust hell wide open. Oh, don't got tight in here. Breathe, baby, breathe so we won't know it's you. Breathe. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell you, not again. How will you broke yourself free from masturbation and go back to that monster? How? How you got free and talk about the process of getting free from that spirit and you let him creep back in unawares. How you get free from bitterness in your heart and let the enemy seep back in like a water through a crack and come back in that same sacred place again. How? How you shut your body down and say nobody until God says so. How you open it back? legs open so quick. How? But when you start putting things and erecting things in the place of God, God's presence leave, loses priority. When we start elevating and, and, and escalating things in the place in our time and our talent and our money and, and, and our admiration, we start admiring the world rather than the things of God. We start admire the fact that, oh, I kept myself. That's a place of admiration that I resisted my flesh. Bought my mind. Resisted my urges. That was a feeling of triumph when you said, mm-mm. I said, my body said yes, but my spirit said no. But there is not even a will to resist. Because there's an absence of his presence. Mm. 
whatever you think you're doing in your church, it ain't going to profit you nothing. I decree in the realm of the spirit it'll resolve in the next three months. I decree it. It'll come to an end. I decree it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come to nothing. God going to bite me. Watch. For I testify again to every man that is circumstance that he's a debtor to the whole. Now you're trying to define what are you doing right. I do all this. I'm doing this right. Even though I ain't doing that right. God said, now I'm going to hold you accountable to all of it. Since you want, you want to choose the law over grace. Because grace kept you out of God's judgment. But now you want to go down and slice your righteousness before him. So he said, I'm going to give you the whole law since you're trying to pick out the parts you think you obey. I'm going to charge you the whole thing. So now you're going to be responsible for all of them. Go on to Leviticus and live there. Because you chose the law of grace. That, that's your choice. Because what we do, we begin to choose the law. We begin to say, well, I can do so and so. Well, um, I ain't cussing nobody out. I ain't bothering. Come on, y'all. I ain't stealing from nobody. Okay. Because we want to use that instead of the fact that you just ain't live righteous. And there's a thin line with righteousness. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's a challenge. Y'all know I'm all booed up now and everything. And so, even in being booed, there is a standard. See, we have to, those who know him more intimately, have to set the standard. We were looking out. Um, my apartment is the bomb. It, it is. It's all of that. Blah, 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 blah. It really is. It, it's a skyline view. Like, oh, this is beautiful. Very beautiful. And um, I was just looking out over my little skyline, window to the floor, to the window to the floor. And I'm like, wow, God just didn't really bear it to me. And one of my friends, she was like, oh, what are you in deep thought about? I was like, no, I'm just thinking about. And I really was really thinking about how good God's been to me. I guess she was looking at me saying, he's been good to me too. <laughs> and so she turned around and she kissed me. A real kiss. Now, it's been a long time since I've been kissed. Lord have mercy. Jesus, help me. I thought it was a dream. I <laughs> I was like, is this real? I dream of this happening, but <laughs> but my spirit woke up and said, not so. I said, uh-uh, we can't do this. Mm-mm. And she was like, oh, you, 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 and I said, oh, mm-mm. I can't do this. Not because it's a sin for you, but it's a sin unto because I'll replace your kiss with his touch. And see, I do want you, but I need him. And if I'm not careful, it's, it's a slow process that you begin to take what belongs to God, that time, that attention, that touch, and you will give it to flesh. And before you know it, you will be don't forgot about his touch altogether for something you want to touch. And before you know it, you don't lost intimacy with the one you were intimate with for intimacy outside the boundary of what is right. 
and I'm not saying because I don't tell people what to do. I don't tell people. I just know for me, I understand my level of passion. I understand my level of drive. I understand how I am, how I, my mind operates. Because in every opportunity, it won't be to get in God's presence. I want that touch. I want that kiss. Until before I know it, his whole presence is no longer there. You, don't, you won't even realize that you miss it. But double have you so busy and so in your mind that you don't forget that it's his presence, his touch that's no longer there. Your boy will be filled with flesh instead of his presence. Do you know what I said? I'm just going to have to pray and make a decision. Is you the one or not? Because I can't go back and forth and be in this. Because if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I said, okay, let me pray. It don't take me long. I know God. I know his voice. Either I'm going to do this or I'm not. See, what we do, we, we use prayer as a, uh, um, a place so that we can do other things and not be accountable, not be responsible. As long as I'm saying I'm praying about it, it gives me time to still play and, 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 and pretend and, and do a whole lot of other things so I don't have to be accountable. Because what comes with the, the answer to prayer is an accountability to what I pray for. There comes a discipline now that I know. It comes a restriction. Mm. Mm. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. You don't get to do whatever you want. When God tells you, it's under even deeper restriction. See what we do, oh, once I say you mine, that means I can set you all up because I already don't said you. Mm -mm. God said it's mine now. Because now you don't consecrate and gave it to me and say it's a part of my will. You can't touch without my permission. All over the head, okay. Mm. Christ has become of no effect unto you. God present is don't even matter with you. You're unaffected by his presence. Unaffected by his conviction. Because you still are justified by the law. Now you don't fail from grace. That's why I'm, that's why you so you bruised. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Somebody give a scripture, no effect. Ooh, it's getting warm in here. Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The word don't came, but it don't have no effect on you. Mm -hmm. Because it has no effect. We, we praying for you, and you still ain't moved. We preaching the word. You still ain't moved. We giving you prophecy, but you still not moved. We issue warning, but you still not moved. Because it has no effect on you. You don't fail. Don't bother you to miss prayer. Because you're already on the floor. You fall. Your priorities don't fail. His presence, the things of God are not a priority for you anymore. Because you fail. Fall on. Being the, the witness of the testimony of Jesus Christ has no effect on you anymore. You notice people notice you're not talking about Jesus like you used to. I'm just not, you know, I'm just, mm -mm. I'm just not, you know, I ain't got to say it. I'm li no, you ain't living nothing. You lying. You ain't talking about him because y'all are distant. Because anybody know anytime you're intimate with someone, the one thing you do, you cannot stop talking about them. 
the fact that you're not talking about them because you can. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't talk about Jesus because he ain't touch you. And you too filthy to touch him. Suckers. This is <laughs> and we will go and be like, but God, you know, everybody's sin and fall. Mm -mm. Quit trying to twist the law to justify the fact that you unrighteous. Quit trying to twist the law because to make consensus for your sin. Evidence is where's your power? Oh, you didn't have to tell a dog, loose here, and he would let go. But you like, loose, loose, loose. And he like, that's a song? <laughs> <laughs> he think y'all singing about something. He ain't subject to you no more. You ain't notice. This is how you know you off. Notice your power isn't it where it used to be. Forget all, <laughs> all, 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 all. <laughs> no. It's his power. That's how we know, like, Lord, all I had to do was mm, say something, sing something, decree something. And things would move, and now nothing is moving. Mm. The truth is, people ain't even coming to you like they used to. Because they even recognize the power source is depleted. <sighs> they feel more loose with you. Because even in your presence, you can feel like, uh-uh, they don't sense it in here no more. The power source is depleted. <laughs> okay, no, you got to get up. <laughs> you don't fall on, <laughs> you got to get up. Ah. <laughs> uh, Tell your neighbor, I got to get my power back. <laughs> hey, God, I got to get my power back. Listen. How are you operating without it? How are you moving and navigating through life without your power? For we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness. Your impatience got you in sin. You couldn't wait. <laughs> it was taking God too long. Ooh. Instead of you seeing what he was working through you and out of you before he gave it to you. You got impatient. See, let me tell you something. You know why we're in trouble? Because somebody else done whispered in your ear, you waited long enough. Somebody can whisper in your ear, everybody done went before you. You waiting all this time. You know you deserve it. You know deserve it before they did, and God done gave it to them before you. You know you need to don't be waiting all this long time. You need to go get yours. God said, There's a, we are immensely out of order. <laughs> There's some seek in, and so you're so busy, you're out of position, so when you're looking to be found, you ain't, you're not in place. So somebody who's seeking, who's in line with God, come looking for you according to where God said you should be and they went looking for you. You wasn't there because you went looking for 
what you thought should have already done found you by now. So when they came, the place that you were supposed to be is empty. Now somebody done lost hope as if God had failed them because you wasn't in position. You were impatient, so you went looking for what you thought you wanted. So what you wanted, if you would have stayed in position, would have found you. Not one, but two lives would have fell in sync of purpose. But because you're impatient, because you want what you want now, because you feel like you waited long enough, you didn't do it long enough, you 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 know you 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 you, you don't suffer long enough. You now determine your you become the judge. So how do how do he reward you if you're judging for yourself? See, you want to be blessed by him, but how do he bless you when you've been blessing yourself? We wait for the hope. See, that's the thing you've not dealt with. You lost hope. Time will make you lose hope. I, I, I'm 53 years old. I, I have to be honest. I had come to a place of resolve that. God, you know, I don't want to be by myself, but if it is, okay, I'm good. I, you know what? I, that's not how I want to live. You know, there's a, a lot of life left in me, but I can wrap myself in my business. I can wrap myself in my family. I can wrap myself in the ministry, and I can be okay. But that wasn't his deal. But what I refused to do was move out of position. I wasn't expecting to fall in love. I wasn't expecting none of that. I wasn't. I was like, okay, God, you know, we get so used to saying, God, when you do it, if you're going to do it, you know, just do it. Until you stop believing what you're confessing. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to walk down through here, but we got to deal with truth today. Until I'm saying it, but I'm not believing it myself. That I don't lose hope in what I'm speaking. I don't lost hope in what I'm decreeing. But God said, I didn't lose hope in what I promised. Woo! See, even when you lose hope, God ain't lost hope in what he promised. And when I, I was, even, was not even expecting it, my God, I was not ready for it. At least not in that place. Because we want what the flesh got. I, I, I was, I was like, ooh, we should get rid of it. I ain't looking for no spirit. See, you used to have a standard, holiness, righteousness, truth. But now it becomes an out. That's how you know you're fleshly. Because you stop looking for God's character in people. You no longer desire the character of God because that's what really drew you. See, how we know it? Because God's character will look over fleshly flaws. It'll tell you like, oh, that ain't who I'm normally attracted to. That ain't normally what I want. But God's character will make you say, mm, because God done housed himself in me. It draws me there. I can't get no help now. No, that's not my choice, but his presence his integrity. I don't found him in that. And it drew me. You know, I was all about interest, 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 interest. Woo, interest. I saw this woman. She, I wouldn't even, because she was so shy and so, you know, I was not even looking at her. Had no plans. But the very first time I saw this woman, we caught each other out. And we just stared for a minute. And then she looked at us and she turned around. She's like, Why are you looking at me like this? I felt something, but I was like, Mm mm. She not, mm mm. No. A couple of shoulders. 
every time I see her, she get aborted. I was like, well, hey. And she was like, oh, hey, Clay. You know? Like, no, nah, she's running from me. And so, but she said, I just kept praying, Lord, if it's your will, he's going to have to see me because I will refuse to be up in his face and chase him. I said, see, you off right there. <laughs> But the Lord spoke to me. He said, she's not going to chase you. If you want her, you're going to have to pursue her. And I said, okay. So I said, can I pursue you? I asked for permission. I said, I, I want to pursue you. She's like, what are you talking about? I said, I want to pursue you. I think I'm your husband. She's like, what? I said, mm. she said, well, you know, I, I, I have a friend. I said, uh, not a real friend. <laughs> I said, well, he could be your friend. <laughs> I'm going to be your husband. He wants to be your friend. I don't want to be your friend. I want to be your husband. So there's a difference. So we're not even in the same category. So I ain't even worried about him. It won't, it won't take two or three conversations. He'll be out. You know <laughs> And sure enough, but I knew, I knew this woman, I knew there was something, and I am a hundred percent sure that she's my wife. Not 98, not 99, I ain't got to go on another fast, I ain't got to, go, I'm a hundred percent sure. Mm -mm. See, this is what I understand about the spirit. When God really speaks to you, you already know. I tell people all the time, it don't take a man for three months to know if you're his wife. And if he ain't moving by the second month, then move away from him. Even if you don't marry him, then he should begin a plan, an acknowledgement. I know you it. This is what I'm prepared to do. This is who I am. This is my life. Lay it out for you. This is my life. Now you, as a woman, get to choose. It's your choice. I can't force you to be with me. This is your choice. This is my life. This is what it is. Now you choose. Because we can't begin to build and decide decisions to be made without those things already lined out. She said yes. What we gonna do, Clay? Let's roll out a plan. We got to begin to talk about everything from finances, emotionally, spiritually, physically, sexually, everything. We need a plan. What we gonna do? So we not gonna lay and play. We not we not gonna play them games. We grown. And let me tell you what God said. Y'all keep talking about y'all grown, but y'all keep making childish choices. See, adults make decisions. Children play with chance. Ooh. Adults make decisions. Children play with chance. We need to grow up. You keep talking about you an adult, make a decision. And take that decision to God. You want God to choose for you, but God can make the choice is yours. God has somebody designed for you, but he said, go find them. See, can you find somebody? The men. Then when you feel like you found what he said, then you take it and present it to him and say, is this your will? Because God's will is always linked with who can help you build. If you still link with somebody who can't help you build, it ain't God's will. His will is only connected to somebody who's going to help you build the kingdom. Then your house and then your family. If it ain't somebody who can help you, it's somebody who's going to interrupt you. Many of y'all got interruptions in your life and not builders. 
Just because they pay for the bricks, but they won't give you to submit to stack them, baby, they still ain't no help. And some of y'all got people who will buy bricks, but they won't help you build. You'll be so infatuated with the fact that they buying bricks that you won't even notice that you're building by yourself. Don't get paid to get out of the will of God. For we by the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness. Like it's a faith thing. Like I'm risking it with this one. Watch. I'm like, I got kids. I don't want nobody. I got four kids. I don't need nobody with kids. I've been clear about that. But sometimes your will and God's is not the same. Because you can have somebody who meet the criteria of what you want, but unable to meet the criteria of what God going to supply you what you need. So I could have missed God because I'm like, uh-uh, she got a kid, uh-uh, no, uh-uh. I'm not, I said I'm not dating nobody with no kid. I had to eat some stuff I said. I was like, I ain't raising nobody else's kid. But she's 16, it won't be much, at least a year or so. But this is somebody who has already helped build and strengthen my business and encourage me and push me to purpose and make me feel, give me back like a sense of life. A place of favor. See, let me tell you something else I noticed. The Bible said when a man finds a wife, he finds a what? And then what he obtained? From who? As soon as I begin to line up and not play games like I've been playing for the last five years, my contract gets bigger. Favor. My apartment gains bigger. Favor. <coughs> Another speaking engagement came through. Contract for Seychelles for next year. People already booking me for next year now. Boom. Oh, we're going to fly you. Don't worry about your ticket. We got it. <laughs> Claiming we, da, 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 da. we can, boom. I mean, everything. Somebody said, man of God, do you believe that that's what God have you for right now? I said, yes, I do believe that I'm supposed to be back in Florida. They said, okay. What is your rent? I said, this is what I commit for the next two years to send forth. I'm like, they committed over half of my rent. Then they said, you need a bed. <laughs> Here go the money for your bed. You got the place, you need a bed. Tell me what you need. Boom, here's the money for your bed. Boom, somebody else said, boom, here's the money for your deposit. Boom, I ain't have no money. Y'all know I got robbed over there. I ain't have nothing. All the money I had, gone. My deposit, my rent, refrigerator. I mean, boom, boom, boom. I said, favor. God would touch the heart of men and make them give unto you. But I didn't go, I didn't beg. I said, I'm not going to beg nobody. I'm not going to ask nobody. God, if you don't direct nobody to give, I won't have it. Because there comes a place in God that you got to know it's him and him alone. It, I mean, it comes a place, in it, and you know I will ask. I'm not shy at all. But there comes a place in God that you need to know in your knowing that this is the will of God for you. And it's got to be so sure that it's God that it don't require nothing of you that he can work it out all by himself. That God has to reveal to you that this is me and I don't need no assistance. When he did it, that's when I looked over that skyline and I said, God, nobody but you. Even when, now listen, eight months ago, I went to apply for this apartment. Everything was coming up, wasn't ready, everything, everything. Every time I tried, nothing. They called me, Mr. Leonard, are you still interested in this apartment? I was like, 
I ain't got no money. None. I'm talking about no money. I was eating once a day. I'm not kidding. This is true before God. I was eating once a day. I was like, okay, dinner, breakfast. I don't want to eat early because then you be hungry all day. I said, oh, I don't want to eat late, and then uh, it's on your stomach, and then you wake up. You eat late, you wake up hungry. <laughs> so I was just really trying to, each day I was really trying to mediate, you know. Can I have a business meeting? At least I get to eat, you know. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to set my meetings up so I can eat. Because, God, whatever you're trying to teach me about sacrifice, I'm going to learn it right here. See what things then became important. Y'all say I ain't called y'all by no prison. I was like, Lord, I don't even care. What I want is you. My gift is to know that I'm in your will. All I want for Christmas is to be in the will of God. That's what I told God, and I meant that all I want for Christmas is to be in your will. All I want is to know that I'm in sync with you because I've been out of sync with you. You up, I'm down. I'm down. You know, it feels like I couldn't catch up from two. And how you know that there's a, a level of uncertainty in you about what you're doing. You're like, should I be doing this? Should I not? Should I? But when you're in sync with God, there's no uncertainty to you. There's no uncertainty to me in where I'm going and what God is doing in my life. There's no uncertainty in who I'm supposed to marry, when I'm supposed to marry. There's no uncertainty. I know God didn't give me an exact date, but I know that 2020 I will be married. I know the woman I'm supposed to marry, who she is. I see her spiritually and naturally. I'm in sync. When you come into a place of purpose and you understand and you have humbled yourself and confessed to God not just who you are, who you're not. What I had to do was tell God what I, what I was not. See, what we do, we get used to telling God who we are. I'm, I'm a child of Abraham. He said, now tell me who you are. I said, God, I, I'm not faithful. I'm not disciplined. I'm not consistent. Sometimes I'm not honest. That's when you get that's when you get to the nitty. Mm -hmm. That's when you say, okay, now I can use you. Now I can trust you. I waited for the hope of life and live by faith. I still said, God, I would say, God, I know I'm gonna get back in position. You're gonna give me back my prayer life. You're gonna give me back my worship. You're going to give me back my praise, God. You're going to give me back. You're going to stir the prophecy back up in me, God. I'm not giving up and I'm not quitting. See, it's always because when you're not in sync with God, you know what you do? You look for an avenue to do something else. you always trying to divert your emptiness into something else. You want to pour what you don't have, but you have that you can't pour into God because it's not pure enough. You, you got to give it out so you find other outlets to utilize to give it to him because you know you can't give it to him. I'm telling you, he's been weighing me out. But I'm grateful. You should ask God. It ain't too late to get your story. Lord, help us all. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You're trying to be intimate with somebody you don't really love. You know when you try to be intimate with somebody you don't love, it's just flesh. It was just sex. It was not, you never made love to them. It was just sex because you didn't love them. <laughs> I don't know why y'all acting like y'all don't know. <laughs> Because it, 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 it's not generated by love. Y'all, you trying to do everything but love people. Any way around love, you trying to look for it. Because love is such a weight, it's such a responsibility, we don't want to love. We don't want to have to love. Like, I don't want to have to love. Like, I don't, like, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, I don't want to have to do that. We, mm -mm. Like, we'd rather give to somebody than love them. 
I'd rather give you something and you think that, that that means that I love you rather than give you me. Rather than me opening up my heart and open up my life to you. Come on, y'all. God said, all them ways, whether you circumcised, you ain't going to have real intimacy until you have real love. He said, you ain't trying to love. We settle for lust. We settle for convenience. God told me, he said, you were, you were ready to have a contractual agreement with sex. You're willing to be in a marriage so you can have sex and somebody can balance out your finances rather than look for somebody you have passion you can deal with. You were willing to compromise because you said, well, I'm never going to have real love. I didn't even think I can love like this. I feel like a kid. My kids was like, Daddy, Daddy, you in love. I said, I am. Oh. I am. I'm not ashamed of being in love. I'm, I'm excited. I wish you were in love because you would be excited too. I'm in love, and it's not, the, oh, this the honey. Mm -mm, no. I know what love is. I felt what I ain't felt with Joy Gazan. That's why I know it's real for me because I said, Lord, now you don't put something I ain't had for Joy Gazan in. Now you, you don't did something to me, Jesus. But you know what? I had to let that go to receive what God has. Some of y'all, you ain't going to feel real love till you let go of your past. <laughs> hey, baby. In your heart, you ain't let them go. In your flesh, you don't let them go. But in your heart, baby, they still sitting there. Until you free them, God can't feel it. We got to let them go in our heart. And I was like, and it was years for me to even come to revelation that Joel was still there. I'm like, just because you don't talk about them, just because they're not there, just because you don't mention them, don't mean they ain't sitting there. They got to go, baby. But faith works by love. And that's why we can't love, because love is, is, is by faith. It's a risk. I put on Facebook, and I've just been so blessed. I was just in the airport, and I was just like, wow. I'm, I began to reflect on my life. I said, Lord, I'm looking. I was already living on two continents. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, I'm like, my two cities, two continents that's far from each other. Like, it's just blowing my mind. Like, God, you, huh? You really doing this? And. I just begin to express it. And let me tell you something. People begin to private message me. The people who own Atlanta City Fashion said, you don't know, you just bless me. I mean, people just, I looked up, it was 10 shares. People just begin to share. They was like, you don't know. People just start sending me all these private messages. Just, you don't know, you just bless me. My classmates from college, classmates from high school. I mean, people who I didn't even think even paid attention, you know, even to things like that. But I just was obedient just in a small thing. God said, make a video and just talk about what I've done to you, done for you. Two minutes. And people just went through. I know I've gotten over 40 messages. And you think it ain't nothing what God is doing for you, but that's big in somebody else's eyes. You think it ain't nothing. God began to tell me this, and I'm going to share this, and I know we got to start beginning to close. He began to tell me, he said, wherever you invest your your time. Wherever you begin to invest your faith, it's going to be the place of manifestation for you. That's the place that's going to be your greatest return. Wherever you invest your time, your talent, your but most importantly, your faith. It's going to be the place of your greatest return. 2019 was tough. We had to overcome some things, endure some things, cry about some things, get mad about some things, get over some things. 
be introduced to some things. But those were seeds. Let me see. Now, it was a toiling, pulling stuff up, uprooting stuff. That's why you can't be in allowing the weeds back in the same places you just pulled them up from. But he began to tell me that that's going to be the place of your greatest manifestation. People are going to know that this is what you believe God in that place of faith. But you're trying to get around faith. You're trying to see how you cannot use your faith. And God say faith is the only way. Do you know I, by faith, I got that apartment, even though I'm probably not going to get my first check from South Africa to March. But by faith, some things require you to move. You, there's some things that you do by faith, you can't wait and be like, oh, when I get it, then I'll do it. There's some things you're going to have to say, God, I'm going to do it and I'm going to believe you to get it. When you begin to launch out and you begin to move by faith, God responds to faith. Tell your neighbor, God responds to faith. Not fake faith, real faith. When you really believe God, every time you really believe God, he responded. How you know it was fake faith? Because you, you were not there and moved and he didn't respond because he doesn't respond to anything that's not authentic. That's not real. Real faith you can feel because you feel like you this thing is already happening before it does. There's a feeling that comes from real faith. You be like, mm. like I'm telling you, he gonna do this. You be feeling that you you, you feel a sense of like, mm, like it'll stir you down in your. You be like, mm, I feel it here. I know it. You can't even put a description on it. That's how real it is. Tell your neighbor, not again. This is the question. You did run well. You started out. You were doing good. Who did hinder you that now you should not obey the truth? Who got in your way now? Because see, anybody ain't pushing you toward God is pulling you from God. Who hindering you that now the truth of what God told you to do, you can't do? Who, who, who is it? Do they have a name? Is it a title? Is it a position? What is it? Who, who, what is it that's hindering you that you know what God said. You know the truth of who you're supposed to be, but you can't be. You know you're supposed to be prophesying, laying hands. You know you're supposed to lay hands on the sick, preaching, teaching. Opening your business, operating. Who hinder you? Is it you? Maybe you the one that's hindering you. notice that your pace changed. He said you did run well. You ain't even walking out the will of God. You ain't running. You ain't even walking now. You laying but it ain't in the will of God. Listen. Y'all got to stop laying and playing. You got to stop. No more free feels, free touches. You gotta stop. And quit saying this the last time as you lay down.
told my friend, I said, listen, let me tell you something. I said, kids ain't no sin, but I can't do that. Because <laughs> I'm a nasty somebody. <laughs> I'm not disciplined like that. <laughs> I, I can't do all that. Then go back to holding your hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not built like that. So I just can't. I can't go back to church. <laughs> I can't go back and be sat down. Like <laughs> the devil a lie. All I can think about, I'm going to be sat down. <laughs> but I thank God for that conviction. I do. I thank God. I said, mm-mm. Because God, whatever I do, God gonna make me tell it. So I said, mm-hmm. That's what I have to go and be like, y'all. Lewis, you get the mic. Then y'all be up here preaching, looking at me like, mm-hmm. 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 God caught the devil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, honey, not so. You won't, uh-uh. Some of y'all weak like, whoa. I know you're gonna get caught in fortification. I knew it. Mm-hmm. I see you, Andre, not so. <laughs> not so. But it ain't easy sometimes in your flesh, especially when you're in love. What is the truth that you won't obey? To trust God for love. What is the truth? You don't trust God process. You don't trust his timing. Or you don't trust his choice. This persuasion comes not of him that called you. Somebody's trying to persuade you not to wait on God, not to take God's choice, not to trust God's time, not to trust God's will. Me and I, I dreamed again you were married, I was dead. And you were just crying, but if you were happy, you were just weeping. But it was like you hardly couldn't hardly believe. And you laughed, and we just, oh. But it just, <laughs> But y'all, it is a time where we got to trust God. Make a commitment to trust God. Trust God's timing, his choice, his will, his purpose. Trust it. God, listen. God knows what he's chosen for you. He knows what you need. He's put it inside a vessel. Some of y'all thought the vessel too short. It's too tall. It's too big. It's too skinny. Trust God's choice. When you don't.
don't, this persuasion that, that is not the one that called you, telling you don't trust God, telling you not to walk by faith. A little leaven. Leaven the whole lot. That little bit not surrendering. That little bit not trusting. That little bit not surrendering. You got to give the whole hundred percent. We think we've given a portion to God that's enough. But God wants it all. All I hear God saying is that some of you escape by a small margin. You barely escape. Listen. It's a small boxes. Them things you think ain't nothing. Those are the things that come to destroy the purpose in your life. Those things that's been made to be fruitful in your life. It guides our people. Redirect them back to the sky. There is such a call to look at our circumstances. I'm, I'm fighting right now. I keep saying I will not look at my circumstances. Because if you look at your circumstance, you'll lose faith right there. Quit looking at how things are and look at what he said. That's why sometimes we have to write it out. We have to visualize it because we are so, and we start, if you don't write out and see something different, you'll believe what you see. That's the only thing you'll trust. You say, if I see it, then that's real to me. That's why sometimes you got to see your promise written down because that's real. The word, the scripture. Because that's real to you. What you see is real to you. Sometimes you can't, because you're trying, you, it take enough for you to walk by faith by what you can't write down. Those things that you can, write it. Rehearse it. Recite it. of change a lot of things been a shift and if you're not careful it's going to look like an earthquake but God ain't shifting them out of order everything going to shift into place but because of how long things have been it's going to take a strong shaking to uproot some things that is going to seem destructive but this shaking is to lose some things that cannot just, will not just naturally come up and uproot. It's going to be a violent shaking. But everything going to shift into place. If you look at what's happening, you're going you're gonna to panic. And you're going to miss it. This is a time you're going to have to meditate on what he said. Because in the natural, it's going to seem like everything is out of whack. God says prepping for everything to be in place. The year going to start accelerating. Things are going to be excessively going to move quick. You're not going to have time to think about it. The Lord is saying that you're going to have to know how to make a decision on the spot. And trust the decision and not look back. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. God said, your faith. You got to muster all the strength you got to stand in faith in this season. What you start off is going to affect the, it's going to affect the trickle of the rest of the year for your life. This is an earth-shaking year. A lot
lot of things that's going to happen this year are going to affect you the rest of your life. Affect the rest of your being. It's going to set the stage of how you're going to live. You can no longer talk about discipline. You're going to have to operate in it. I hear the Lord say, starting with your tongue. Your looseness of words must cease now. The Lord said, there's a spirit of depression that has trailed you in 2019 that's coming to rest on you in 20. If you don't confess and get help, we're going to have to say, listen, I feel heavy. Pray for me. And it ain't going to be the laying on hand. It's going to be the words. Words are going to mean so much in 2020. They're going to be so powerful. Words. The release of words are going to be so powerful in 2020 that it's going to be mind-blowing. Because it's like the earth is ready to receive, even in the, the heavenly, even the stars. They're ready for us, who those who are spiritual, to go back into position and speaking those things not as though they were. There have been so many barricades in the realm of the spirit because things have not been spoken to remove things. Because even the prophets are out of position and we're not speaking. We're not clearing. We're not setting the precedence for the stage for the coming of the bride of Christ. God is soon to come. But it's like there's not a setup of the stage. He's not coming without a setup. He reminded me of a word that he gave me long years ago. The church ain't going to leave with less power than what it came in. He took me all the way back to that vision. I had this vision almost 30 years ago. And people were gathered. And it was all tongues and nations of people. And above the people, there was a small cloud. And before the people, there was a cross. And the people were sad. And in the vision, I was like, why are the people sad? He said, those are the petty sins of the people. The cloud represents the small sins of the people that hinder them from getting to me. And he said, they're going to miss me because of the pettiness of the people. It was a small cloud that was hovering over the people and the sadness of the people were great because they could see because they couldn't see because of the pettiness what we thought was small sins. We thought the small foxes things that they can get away with that they didn't have to deal with but he spoke to me he said but the blood the cross is just as fresh as it was the day on Calvary and it can cleanse them of even the small things and God reminded me y'all you just can't go to God about the big things that you think are big sins to God you gonna have to go to God about them little small foxes them little that little attitude those little small ill feelings that small feeling of jealousy small issues of rage that stubbornness that small spirit of strife that small lust problem you got to bring it all to God y'all we got to take it all we got to bring it all to him you will hear the whistle of wind in January going to know that it's going to be in the wind. You'll hear the whistle of wind, but there's going to be a voice and a song in the wind. I know that sounds crazy, but God said even in the wind, there's going to be songs of Zion that will be sung out of what people hear that they, they heard in the wind. God said the songs, even the worship are going to be song of few words, but words of power. God said, people just going to be in worship and be healed. God said, say in worship, people going to be delivered. You ain't going to have to lay hands. They're going to be in worship. And they're gonna just going to be purged in worship. They're just going to be purged in worship. God said, the songs and people's hearts, emotional healing. And you're going to be able, you're going to look and see people. You're going to look at them and say, you look changed. God said, they physical, even their presence of their face is going to change. And you're going to know people have been free. But God says it's going to be a great 
sense of almost like a masquerade coming of deception that's coming to deceive the church. Not the world, they're coming to deceive us. We're going to have to be discerning. People are going to come with gimmicks and games into the church to move us away from worship and make us focus on natural things. They're going to have ideas. And we're going to have to say, mm-mm, not if it ain't the will of God. Even as we move into the change of the church name, like the Church of Philadelphia, because it's gonna, the foundation has got to be about love. God said no more excuses for why you're not loving people. Bye -bye -bye. Sure. And God said no more excuses about why you're not loving yourself. <laughs> God said no more. You No more excuses. It ain't that you ain't loving people because you ain't even loving yourself. And some of y'all have not even been to that place of willingness to be honest that God, I don't love myself. And God said not to love yourself is not to love his creation. But God said, you're going to have to go back because if you don't love what God created in you, you're not going to appreciate the love that he gave you in somebody else. God said, trust his word over what you hear. People's speech is going to betray them. The power of words makes sure you wisely use your words. But the enemy going to try to trap you up with words. Why could you say people going to go back and try to track you by what you said to trick you? Remember, words are designed for you to heal, not destroy, to build. There's a spirit of forgiveness you have to operate in that's going to be beyond your strength. But forgiveness doesn't mean replication to allow people to replicate and come back and do the same due process in your life. Forgiveness is designed to be a tool of freedom. I forgive you because I'm free, not because I'm bound to you. Some forgiveness is going to separate you from people. And some, some forgiveness is going to bring you together with people. And only God can give you the choices. People have, there are going to be people from your past coming back and they're going to they're gonna want to register the same position and posture they had before. And God said they can't come back until they earn it. So they confess their way. You're going to have to know that people have made changes not by, by their speech, but by their actions. And people are going to be saying, trust me. You got to tell them, I can only trust God in this. But the Lord told me to remind you of one word. He's faithful. He is faithful that promise. say that to about God is faithful because some of y'all are struggling with the faithfulness of God and God said to remind you that he's faithful and he's going to do it he's going to do it just say he gonna do it because he faithful like that 